No, you don't have to go. You don't have to leave. I'll come and sit with you. Yes. I'll come and sit with you. Yes. 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 Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Aren't you? Sweet boy. Say again. Speak again. Say again. Oh, careful. I've got my phone on the floor. How are you? Are you okay? Oh. Darling, it's the Shy Life Podcast. <laughs> well, it's a positive thing, the High Life, the Shy Life. You won't find a cast of characters like this everywhere. Hello, Paul. Delicious. This particular episode of the Shy Life is, is a little more abstract. <laughs> okay, it looks like the hairy guy is ready to record. Three, two, one. Go Shy Yeti. Oh, I hope he hasn't found out my secret. I think he has. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Shy Life Podcast with me, Paul the Shy Yeti. How are you doing? Oh, I'm all right. Um, so, uh, dear Deelys here. Say hi, Deals. Yeah, that's a good man. Um, yeah, Deals is here and um, this time on the show... Uh, we've got, oh, uh, I'm not sure what you can call it. It's, well, honey, it's a little bit inspired by um, that game that Nick and I do with the words. Um, and uh, Tarula Twinklehorn has sent us a gift. Uh, I suppose we should run the theme music, and when we come back, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more. All right. Okay, run that theme music. Time for my old buddy, old pal, from across the channel, across the pond, Bob Chandler, the shy yeti. He's not that shy. Oh, he's shy like Peter. Yeah. All I wanted was a pie. And then I hatched out of an egg. Okay, bring the mic over. He's ready to record. It's the quiet ones you've got to watch, you know. Is it metaphorical? Is it, is it deep? Is it deep? Look at the boy. He's not all that shy. is right. Blimey, Governor, it's the Shy Life Podcast. If you thought that was bad, just listen to this. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for it to begin. It's the Shy Life Podcast. It's positively glowing. <laughs> Hello, we're back. So, yes, um, Tadula Twinklehorn uh, gave me a call the other day. Um, uh, well, it went a bit like this. My darling, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm very well, thanks, Tallulah. How are you doing? How's my lovely brother? Oh, he's okay. Yeah. Still being a painter? He is, yes. I'm afraid there's no sign of the old Damius as yet. I know. Well, I was speaking to Bettina just the other day, and she said to me, you know, he's very similar. He is. He is, in a way, yes. He is very similar. Um... Hmm. So, yeah, how, how are you doing? How, how can we help you? Well, I'm sending you something in the post. I heard that episode you did with that young Mr Nick uh, about the words. Oh, yes. We've already recorded a sequel, but uh, I can't remember whether it's gone out yet. Oh, well, I'm very excited. I must check. Um, anyway, I'm sending you some dice. Some dice? Yes. Um, they're, they're meant to... You know, um, they're meant to inspire conversation. But if you play them right, uh, if you roll enough of them, well, you might find that the person rolling them, uh, that they literally, quite literally, um, will uh, roll up a, a story from their past. Uh, oh, OK. What do you mean that the, that the sort of... A literal, not just a... Not just an inspiring... You know, like when Nick and I see a word, it inspires a memory. This will be the more dice you roll, 
the more specific the memory will be. Yes, you see, it's like the dice nose. Oh, the dice nose, and it's trying to get the story out of you. Yes, it's a sort of mystic quality. Sounds very exciting, Tallulah, thank you. I've just popped it in the post. I, 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 I thought of you, I saw it down the market. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's great. You should do it with the, um, you know, you should you should do it with the others. Maybe with my brother. Oh, uh, oh, I see. I see. That's the whole... Uh, right, OK. You think it might specifically pick out a memory? I, I, I did hope so, my darling. OK, well, we'll have a go and we'll let you know. All right, all right. Thank you very much. I, I love you, my darling. I love you too, Tallulah. Speak to you soon. Anyway, that was a day or two ago, and the dice have now arrived. So, as as the uh, the regulars come through, we'll um, well we, we'll see if we can get them to roll a dice or two. Um, but uh, D- Dilly, do you want to roll? No, Dilly doesn't want to roll the dice. Um, um, but maybe. Maybe Nick and I can play a like a basic version of this. Let me see. I've got the box here. The subjects are people, actions, objects, food, uh, feelings, animals. Animals deals. Will you appear on this? Sports, places, transport, weather. Um, uh, well, we'll just we'll just pick it randomly. Um, then I'm just going to pick one. We'll see who else turns up. I think August and Cromarty have just gone down the shops. So I'm hoping that, uh, yeah, that, that uh, I can get them when they come back in. So I'm not going to go for a definite subject. I'm just going to pick one, and I'll talk about it. I don't know that it'll it'll conjure up a memory. Um, okay. Um, I, I, I just close my eyes and I'm going to pick that one and I'm going to roll the dice. What's that? Deals! Ah. Uh, what is that? Ooh. It's a bat. I guess it's an animal. Uh, it's, I think that is a bat. I wouldn't say that the drawings on here are particularly wonderful, but uh, what do I think of when I think of bats well the two things uh one of them would be um uh well dark shadows i suppose <laughs> and i remember one of the things about dark shadows that i liked right at the start when i first saw it was um how wobbly you know they were doing special effects but it was hard to sort of achieve them on a, a uh, low budget and uh, i i remember some of the bats were were pretty ropey um and uh, i think as time went on possibly I, I i can't remember i mean it all mixes in a bit with sutton park um but uh yeah uh, i can't remember if if how bad the bats were really you, you end up you end up conjuring up a a sort of uh, uh an image in your mind i, I, have, a, I have a feeling that as time went on maybe they they sort of superimposed them as well did a bit more camera trickery. Um, but all in all, I don't think uh, Bats on Dark Shadows were ever one of their uh, triumphs. But, uh, of course, Barnabas Collins was a vampire, so they needed to, you know... Uh, I, I don't think he changed into a bat very often, but I'm pretty sure he did on certain occasions. I think if Toppy Smelly was here, he'd remember. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to mention about Bats... Um, and along the same lines, but more personal, was uh, uh, there was a character called Barry the Bat on uh, on Sutton Park. Now, um, between you and I, Barry the Bat, well, um, yeah, there, there was, I have a feeling there was more than one bat. I have a feeling there was Barry the Bat early on, unless Barry the Bat had a, a makeover. I can't remember, but hello, deals. Yes, we're, tell- we're talking about Barry the Bat. Do you remember him? No, you don't. Um, the original Barry the Bat was quite plasticky, let's say, sort of elastic, um, 
and uh, I think that Cromarty used to hang out with him quite a lot. And I, I think I remember uh, going back to Toppy Smelly again. I, I think, well, I think I put an episode of Sutton Park on filmed in Scotland, which had Barry the Bat. And I think Toppy Smelly was very taken with him. I, I, I feel like later in the 90s, I, there may have been a more soft, furry, kind of cutesy bat on the show. Unless it was still Barry, as I say, with a makeover. I'm not sure. Um, but those are my two main bat memories. <laughs> um, not quite, not quite, I'm not sure we're really playing the game as, as we should, but, uh, um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I, I might, as I say, it would be quite fun to use the dice as, as in this way though. Maybe, um, maybe Nick and I will, uh, play the game in that way. Just pause there whilst the others arrive. By the time this episode is edited, I would have done that. So let, let's um, have a listen and see what uh, Nick and I do with the dice, as it were. <laughs> and then when we come back, hopefully, we'll, we'll be back now and um, uh, yeah, uh, we'll get them to roll the dice. And hopefully they'll you know, maybe come to a bit of a, uh, a specific story. Out and <laughs> I'm going to roll it, and it should generate a word. Splendid! Um, it's, it's a different version of our, mm. our s- setup. So, right, I'm going to roll it now. If it doesn't go too far. A more physically mechanical one. Um, you're not going to like this. <laughs> um, well, I'm not going to like this either. We'll have to really struggle. Um, I guess we could talk. Well, the 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 word that we have is football. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, the, what, what you and I know about football <laughs> could probably could be put written on the back of a post stamp. Stitch stamp, yes. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, well, that is in itself um, what we can talk about. Funnily enough, mm. I was actually, um, to, believe it or not, I was actually thinking about football because um, uh, the other day, because uh, they, uh, they put up one of these perennial posts on Facebook saying, if you could delete something from the world, what would it be? And a lot of people were saying religion. And of course, I've got, you know, why um, always So I was thinking, I would love to be contribution for football. <laughs> <I'd>, <laughs> and, but um, obviously, you know, because you know, um, there you have a lot, you know, a lot, a lot of people... Um, uh, turning into hooligans and you know w- watching two men kick a ball. I mean, uh, to the likes of you and I, it's absolutely inexplicably ludicrous. Um, I acknowledge that it has its followers, but I just I've just never got it. Um, and uh, you know, you know, we, you know, people say, "Are we a Doctor Who fan?" You do. At least there is stimulation with Doctor Who. There's different planets, there's different characters, there's different stories. Toxic masculinity is a word that comes up much, um, very much these yes. days. And, um, you know, the, the people who make other people feel bad for not liking, that, that's toxic it masculinity is. in a nutshell. Um, 
it, it's you know just because you don't want to kick a ball yeah. around or want to do something more interesting or creative yeah. um you know when, what is it that you know it, it uh, I mean, it's a very much a herd thing, isn't it? Uh, Absolutely. You know, being part of a team. I've never really liked being part part of of big teams. I don't. I like being in a, like our little yes. groups. I've never done gangs very well. The, uh, uh, probably the the nearest I've ever ever got to a gang was in the nineties with you guys, uh, with you, Toby, Lisa, Elaine, Keith, occasionally Warren. Um, with the RPS and the films and and Sutton Park and. And all the creative things we were doing in the nineties. That is probably arguably the most I've come to a gang. The people that there's a small core of people that are on Facebook that I've known since literally since the beginning of my school days, like Sally Ann Prince, Nick Conio, Helen Russell, um, uh, Debbie Pollitt. You know, they're, they're, they're all people that I, I go back. But I wouldn't have called them a gang at the time. They're all they're all there. And yes, I, I would play with them from time to time and everything. But we weren't, and it, uh, we and we all know each other now. But that's retrospective. You know, it's, it, we weren't a cohesive gang that went along, uh, went together all the time. So, and also with <laughs> football, um, I don't know if it would have been better if I had had a um, because my my grandfather took my dad to football matches now. Obviously, my dad was was very ill when I was a boy, and I didn't have that kind of close relationship with him. So, I, I, I mean, and also, I suppose, short of taking me to see Salisbury, because um, he was very, I think he supported Southampton, so he was very keen on Southampton. Uh, I, short of taking me to see Southampton, which... Whether it would have rung any, I, I do not know. But obviously, he didn't take me to see any football matches. And uh, I don't think he was. I think he was. He liked football, but he wasn't that mad about it. So really, I had no male role model about football whatsoever. Really, um, you either are, you aren't. I think if you. I don't think it would be difficult to, if you liked it, yeah. you'd like it. Um, and, and we just don't no. like it. And we just, Never have done. The only time I've been, I mean, I I, I did go through a sort of a, a, a weird stage. Um, I mean, when I first met Callum, I went to the racing with him and I did enjoy that for quite a while and I did enjoy travelling around. But, you know, after after a while, that sort of faded. But... Uh, there was a shorter lived period where I did go to football matches with him in Aldershot, but that was literally in that early sort of period where I first the honeymoon him. period. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. it's kind of like you wanted to establish mm. yourself mm. that 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 you were around and you were, you, you were able to be there to be part of the gang. Yeah. And, and you know, there was a period I didn't go away much at weekends mm. because we always had something planned for Saturday yeah. nights. Uh, but I wanted to sort of establish it's, myself if I was moving into a to- totally new area, and, and you know it was something to do. And I, there was always a burger involved, uh, maybe a beer or two. Also, and, and yeah, I, was, I mean, it's that I wanting to be accepted. Really that I, I, I can get, I get that completely. Um, but it was still very much, it was still very much him and I going to the football. It wasn't a load of lads <laughs> going to the football. <laughs> Um, uh, and, and also, I think I managed to video bits and pieces and work plot lines into Sutton Park, where the controller sort of had his finger in sort of sporting events um, and, and making money and stuff. Yeah. And so I still, I still managed to sort of work it into to make it, you know, if, if it involved filming in the nineties, then 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 I could always turn it into something more than what it actually yeah. was. Um, if you know yeah, I mean, we, uh, I, uh, I'm well aware, because I don't really particularly like any sport. I don't mind, you know, if, uh, uh, spontaneously, not a football match per se, but, um, for example, on Christmas time, um, well, near Christmas, uh, Jen and the, the kids came down, and um, we went for a walk uh, on the Harnham Cricket playing field, and we just we just had a we had a ball and we, we just had a knockabout in the game and I've even got photographic evidence to prove it. But, um, and it was fun because no, we were just messing around. We weren't, there was no structure, no game, no 
rivalry. We, we were just kind of running around and, and getting the ball. Um, and it, that, it, it take, pared down to that informality. Um, yes, it, it, it I, yeah, I, I would play a, I would play a game as long as it wasn't sort of three nil and everything and all of that, you know, all that rubbish. I, I think a lot, I think a lot of it does come down to, um, the type of person you, uh, that sort of rubbishy bullshit masculinity uh. thing, thing that, that puts you puts you off that you can't you can't go watch football and then go and do ballet or or do something exactly. you know you, yeah. or do you go and do painting you can't you can't do yeah. the two things certainly when we were growing up you couldn't have a sensitive side and a football side no um, it was it was unheard of um, this is this is why I mean I it was a bit of a um, this was shock to me when in 78, when I moved from, uh, the, um, Tolgate Road to, to Harnham, because in Tolgate Road, there were kids a lot younger than me. And this is why I think I started hanging out with kids a bit younger than me, um, is because they didn't have that, um, that over masculinity or over kind of competitiveness that, my contemporaries did and uh, they didn't you know they were much more interested in inventive games and games about planets and aliens and and other worlds and 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 other creatures and then and i got to harlem there was sort of people my my age slightly older and everyone was obsessed with football um i didn't even play football until i was you know as a as a proper game until i was 10 when we did um, P kind of moved more consistently outdoors, and we did you know football with proper football boots. And I thought, oh, this is a bit of a drag. Um, and we would, you know, inevitably were dragged. That's the other thing I may be great on me about football is I was I, we were dragged out in all weathers, um, as if you know. <laughs> I mean, there's making a man of you, and they're making you very ill. Uh, they were making me very ill. Um, and there, there just doesn't seem to be any provision for that at all. I mean, I, uh, the, the lengths I went to when I went to Chapin Grove, that private school I went to for two years, the lengths I went to, you know, um, I, suppose, I suppose it was either a case of playing games every day, every yeah. like five days a week, or, yeah. or, ex- or exaggerating, you know, when I got colds and stuff. And, uh, yeah. and I, I know that I, did, I, made, <laughs> I exaggerated how sick I was to get out of games. Yeah. I'd have quite happily sat through more lessons uh, instead yeah. of you know instead of having to do five games five days a week. I'd have happily sat through more math lessons or any any set yeah. lessons like even you know, even the ones I hated than, than having to do yeah. that five days a week. It's not like I was trying to sky work. The Harlem Juniors had of course that was right at the base of the uh, Harlem Hill. Now Harlem Hill, walk, uh, a jog around a run around Harlem Hill. Yeah, fine. I. That that would be delightful, but not in Arctic conditions, um, you know. I, I, and then I'm off school with a cold. Mm. Was it worth it? I ask. You mm. know, uh, or, or just give us some more long johns, or, <laughs> kind of, or it does it us have, a little bit better? Or does it even have um, to? Or, or why not? Ne- why why does it have to be running? It could be a nature walk. Yeah, I mean, which is absolutely, what, which is what um, if you remember when I was in the sixth form at uh, the grammar school, I. Um, well, at least the first year I did, uh, it was Robin and I used to. That's when I discovered a lot of the places like the chalk pit and and um, the. Well, I think I probably knew about the chalk pit because it's so close to where you live. But but things like broken yeah. bridges and and old routes up to old Sarum and because um, they were you were allowed to do cross country. But Robin and I used to just walk it and talk about the stories we were writing. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. by the time it came to the second year, sixth year. Robin wanted to ru- to run and get back in time to revise, mm. whereas I was never, I was never very good at revising or certainly. So, but um, I think that's probably where we started going off occasionally down to Bournemouth. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. As <laughs> soon as Robin started to run, you started running yeah, to, to, Bournemouth to Bournemouth with me. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, the thing is also, um, yeah. I mean, nobody because um, football was so big, nobody was. Um, conciliary enough to actually sit down and tell you what what on earth it's all about because i i said to somebody you know because of uh, being aware that in my new school football was was king and i said well 
how do you play it then? Oh, you just kick a ball about. Well, thanks a lot. You know, that, 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 that's not very enlightening, is it? Um, <laughs> so it's annoyance with this. It, even when you, you attempt to learn something of football, they can't be bothered to teach you. Um, it's like the same with um, PE teachers. They expect you to, 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 to whack in there and know all about the sports. And, or, or, you know, they t- expect you to be mega good at it. Yeah, Even if you kind of haven't, you haven't got the frame for it, uh, and, they, and, uh, and they don't seem to care that you might be good at something else, and that the two aren't compatible. Exactly. Um, and, and I know that in, again in sixth form, um, one of our rugby teams, school rugby teams, was doing very, very well. But they did so well that they failed their mocks for their A levels. <laughs> um, and then exactly. there was, I remember there being a bit of a thing, sort of saying we need to change the priority on games, but certainly in the A, in A level when you're people are trying to aim to get to university um sports shouldn't be as important at that point because you're almost like no. if you were at college rather than staying to sixth form if you were at college uh, the tech college you wouldn't have had games at all so no uh, exactly so, so really games in the sixth year is sort of should shouldn't really even be a priority um but, no. it, but it was made too I, much of a priority for the one of the years i was there but, uh. so one of the reasons i kind of um regularly turned away from my own peer group is uh, they're, they're all boring they're very boring they just talk about football all the time I, I don't, excuse uh, me yeah. it seems to be one of those subjects that pe- people you get away with t- talking about it and not realize not how you don't have to realize that actually the you, you, you don't read the room and see that no yeah. that nobody is interested people will talk about football um and, and they won't think oh is this a subject that everyone here is interested in? Um, <laughs> they're so used to it. They're so used to it. Is it's again? It's a bit of a toxic masculinity thing. Yeah. Where where they don't even think. I also hate the fact that you know if it's on the te- not so much now because in this in the age of DVDs and I don't really watch a great deal of contemporary well not hardly any contemporary telly uh, when in the old days more when it used to it used to be shown and it wiped it it. it trampled over everything you know if, if it was into overtime it, it didn't matter about the program that was coming up it was it was football and that's all that mattered um i do realize there's a lot of money involved in it uh. you know, like saturday afternoons in the 80s all you'd find on two of the channels would be sport um yeah and uh, which if you weren't interested in, well i mean usually you got out and that was a good excuse to get to, to go out and avoid it but uh, but i mean i think i've always said this and i've probably said this before um uh fo- fans of football particularly football more so than any other sport because somehow cricket fans that they manage to talk about cricket and yet not be as the common perception of a cricket fan is probably more of a bookish person than it is an oh, yeah. Person. oh yeah but but i mean what what football fans need to um fully uh, except is that to, to be a fan of football is to be a geek and is to be and it's just as um, <laughs> at least it's, just it's as geeky just yeah. as geeky as being a sci-fi fan or or, or train spotter it, it, yeah. it is um don't somehow make it into being some sort of glorified to ha- somehow above all those other geeky subjects yeah. it's a geeky hobby and that and, and, and yeah. that it always has been um yes exactly uh, and also you know it's um People accuse, you know, in the, the, the church of inciting violence, but it shouldn't be. Um, but uh, neither should football, and that incites violence. Um, you know, it, it's. I suppose you know because of its popularity, it's a necessary evil. But I just, I, as I say, I, I am it, within my home, uh, within my family. I'm a biological freak in that I'm not interested in any sports. And I'm not, you know, if somebody says, if somebody said to me, some a good friend sort of said to me, oh, you know, should, should we go down Victoria Park and have a, a, a spate with, you know, on, on the tennis court? I'd probably say yes. Nobody's done that to me for years. No, um, but you know, if they said, you know, I'll just have a knockabout, you know, if they if they were saying, you know, sort of, yeah, we've got some tournaments and there's money involved. And, uh, yeah, the trouble with me, if I saw, the last my last association with the tennis court was there's there's one in in the park in the centre of the square where I work, which obviously you can only get into if you've got a key. And when I brought Sutton Park back ten years ago, one of the first cliffhangers I did was um, me hearing a noise in the tennis court 
um because nobody was there nobody was in the park at all nobody uh, and i um and i i got this clock that was a, a robot not 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 clive the clock another one and and I, and I tried to make it look like it was stalking through the trees and i was trapped in, in a tennis court and not, not being able to get to the, the, the door to escape as the robot came down at me. So if I, if, if I see a tennis court, I'm, I'm thinking, hmm, how, what, what sort of cliffhanger can I involve with this tennis court? Nothing to do with Yeah, that. exactly. Not, you, you, yeah. You, you, therefore, you've, you've translated it to something that is... Dramatic. Uh, or, uh, dramatic and inventive. Yeah. Um, um, so and not, as what, not, not as what it was meant for. <laughs> But, no, uh, but it, it, you know, it's 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 a different take yeah, on it, yeah. um, and uh, one should be allowed that yeah. um, that that freedom yeah. uh, to to do that. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, you know, if some if somebody genuinely or it was a spontaneous thing, you know, they just um, they had a ball and they were kicking it and to me to you, and I'd, as long as it wasn't a a serious structured game or you know, I, I, I have no objection to the actual activity. But being, be honest, but the chances of that happening with you and I are zero. Are very, very, um, <laughs> very, very remote. I think we're more likely to write a book. Maybe kicking a conker uh, or something that fall a snowball or something. Snowball. Yeah. That's I can get down with snowball. Snowball. That, now you're talking. Yes, <laughs> I mean, that's that's much that's much more like it. But in answer to your very first question, yeah. I might not look like football, but together, if we add a bit of bile, <laughs> we, can, we can talk about football for hours, but for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, well, it's, we, 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 uh, well it certainly generated a conversation. Anyway. It did. <laughs> We're back. Um, uh, we have Martin here. Uh, hello, it's me, Martin. Uh, what do you want me to do, Paul? I want you to um, select some of these dice. Um, I think you're allowed to pick as many as you like. Uh, obviously, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think you should pick them all because the chances of you having a story that relates to all of these dice um, is probably unlikely. I don't know about these dice, but they sound a bit wild. <laughs> they are kind of wild, yes. All right. What do you want me to do? Pick them right, with my eyes closed? Yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, shall I take four? Take as many as you like. I mean, it's only a game, after all. All right. Uh, I think it's one. Just put it there, OK. OK, I'll take that one. All right. Take that one. OK. And I'll take that one. All right. Do you want to roll them all at once? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, I think I've rolled them. All right, yes. Don't, don't want to scare deals, do you? Um, and the only thing is we have to try and work out what these pictures are. Okay, well, there's a, 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 a door. All right. A horse. All right. And a boat. A boat. And, and a banana. A banana. Blimey. <laughs> uh, can, can you think of a story that relates to your own life? Uh, um, well, it's funny you say this, Paul, eh? I actually can. Oh, my goodness, this is freaky. Really, Martin? Well, yeah, years ago, right, I worked uh, on, on a big ship, 
uh, and we were, uh, you know, having to transport animals, uh, and, and they're, they're actually uh, thoroughbreds, like, like you know, um, it was sort of for like um, stud purposes. Oh right, okay. Uh, it wasn't like that far, but it was, um, you know, we travelled across to Ireland and on a, on 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 a, a horse ferry. On a horse ferry. Yes. Yeah, on a horse ferry. Um, and uh, uh, you see, I don't know if you know it, but um, horses love bananas. Okay. Well, they they do quite like bananas. They're, uh, they're not really always supposed to have bananas. Anyway, I was on this boat and uh, uh, I, I fell asleep and uh, 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 I, I got locked in. I had to spend the rest of the night with the horse, who was very friendly, um, but got a bit cross because I'd already given them, like, uh, their food, and uh, the only thing I had left was a, bit, was a banana. Oh, I see, so this is where the banana comes in. Hey, yeah, well, when I say uh, horses eating bananas, you see, um, the situation was that the horse was pretty cross that I was there and I wasn't feeding it. And I was locked in with it, and I couldn't get out until the morning. And the only stuff I had was, yeah, my my tea, or, or the remainder of my tea. So I had to give it the banana. And uh, how did you know that? <laughs> I, I didn't know. I didn't know it. It's the dice, the magic of the dice. Oh, that's good. That's really weird, Paul. It's really weird. It, it is pretty weird, isn't it? Oh, oh, here's the phone now. Oh, sorry, Martin, thank you. Uh, you can, you can uh, <laughs> do whatever you were going to do before I kidnapped you. <laughs> Kidnap me. <laughs> yeah, it's phone, phone, sorry. Hello? Hello, darling, it's me, Bettina, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yes, we're just doing this thing with a, a dice. <laughs> it's a game that Tallulah gave us. It's actually, well... Conjured up some memories. Oh, darling. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Can I play? Well, I guess so, yes. Oh, well, I, I was just wondering if uh, August uh, was, um, you know, <laughs> what is he about? Um, he's out with comedy at the moment. Because um, the, you know, the lockdown is sort of more easy now and the shops are back open. And, um, but uh, what, were, you, were you hoping to come over? Oh, well, you know, I, I kind of was, but. Uh, um, is, is, is that going to be possible? I think you're allowed to come over now. I think you are. And anyway, we can always uh, put you through a, a, you know, one of the icks things. Yes, <laughs> yes, one of the icks things. Uh, talking about ick, he's just walked in. Ick, ick, don't go anywhere. Oh, hello, Paul. <laughs> what, what's going on? Uh, I'm just on the phone to Patina, but I need you. Oh, all right, I'll wait. Um, so, yeah, uh... You, you want to come today? No, darling. Maybe in the next few days. I just wanted to know what, how the situation lies. How, how is he? Oh, he's all right. You want me to roll a dice now? Well, I don't know how it will work down the phone. Um, maybe wait until you come over um, and uh, do it in person, because I, I don't know it will work if I am rolling the dice for you. All right, darling. I'll give you a date and I'll see you soon. All right. All right. Bye-bye for now. Bye, darling. I should have got up to say hello to the listeners. Yes, Paul, yes. What's going on with these dice? Well, I don't know if it'll... I don't know if it'll work. Because maybe you need alien dice. Oh, yes, Paul, maybe. Um, so... Because uh, these dice, you know... Well, they're supposed to... You're supposed to pick them and roll them, and it's supposed to sort of um, form a memory, a very specific memory. Oh, like that game that uh, uh, you Nick did. Exactly like that, yes. Uh, but a little bit more sort of specific. I see, yes, yes, you were telling me. These are two little dice. Yes, yes. Well, shall I pick a few? Yeah, yeah, take as many as you like. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. You know, it says pick as many as the person wants to pick, but it uh, seems a bit, a bit uh, I don't know, how, how accurate it'll be if you pick ten. It's, it's, uh, well, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, leave it there. One there. One there. Oh, okay, it's on the floor now. 
Any more? Four's enough, Paul. All right. Uh, roll them. There we go. Um, we've got a man with a hat. I guess he was a fireman. Oh, yes. And there's a man running. Oh, right. And there's a fish. A fish. And a pair of scissors. A pair of scissors. Oh my God, Paul. The ick, what? That's a story. Wh what? 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 What is the story? Don't you remember when, when I first came down to earth? That, um, I, uh, I didn't know that much. I didn't. I didn't know that, that much about human food or animals. Or I knew about Dooney, of course. But, um, yeah, I used to find them quite shocking. Do you remember when, when you came home that day? And, uh, um, you found me in the kitchen. Um, um and, and outside the house, there was a, a fire engine. Uh, and I was, I was very, oh, I was, I was, I was out of my mind. I, 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 oh my goodness, I do remember that. Uh. Yes, but it was because, uh, I, I opened up the fridge and I thought there was a creature inside, a monster. And it was going to devour me. Um, but actually, it was just the Uncle John's, um, kippers in the fridge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I came into the house. You called the fire brigade. <laughs> you called the fire brigade of all things. They're outside knocking on the door. Uh, we're thinking, wondering where the fire was. And you, you were up on the, uh, the table with a pair of scissors uh, sort of I don't know trying to ward off the, the, the kippers yes <laughs> yes that's right that's right oh dear and you came to the door I just bolted I ran back to my spaceship as fast as I could go and you had to explain to the fireman what was going on well I didn't really know I, I had to I had to make something up oh dear I'm like yeah so there's the fireman there's the scissors and the fish and, I guess, the person running. That was you running. Yes, oh, yes. Oh, God. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, it, you see, these dice do work. They're funny, aren't they? They are. Oh, God. Um, well, uh, have you seen Cromarty or Yeti Uncle John or, or, or um, August? I saw them coming down the road. They should be here soon. All right, then. Oh, dear. Have I gone wash up and uh, get changed and no, I like, come and sit in the background and watch? All right, yes. Oh, yeah, here they come. Guys, guys. Hello, Paul, hello. Oh, uh, hello. Oh, we've just been to the shops to, to get me some knickers. Uh, ah, wow. <laughs> and, and some slippers. Slippers and knickers. Oh, well. Guys, I, I want you to uh, roll some dice for me. Uh, Tallulah sent these dice. Do you remember I told you, Cromarty? Oh, yes, yes, of course, I remember. Uh, how do we play it? You just uh, selected a, a few dice, I'd say about four or five, and um, hopefully it'll conjure up a story from your past, maybe something you've forgotten. Uh, it's worked so far uh, for, for Ick. Yes, it worked for me. And, uh, uh, and also for Martin. Um... Uh, do, you, do, you, do you fancy doing it? Oh, yes. That would be interesting. Cromarty, you should go first, though. All right. Uh, Cromarty. All right, it's okay. So I'll reach out and mix them up. That's right, mix them up. Uh, does Dealey mind? No, Dealey's sitting there nice and quiet on your Dealey. Like a good mouse. Uh, go then. Right, uh, take, take this one. Take this one. I take this one, and I take this one. Right, and then roll them again. Roll that one. Roll that one. Roll that one. Roll that one. Okay. Well, there's one with a speech bubble. Literally a speech bubble. Uh, the man running again. Clouds. And a helicopter. 
Oh dear, Paul. Uh, speech bubble. Uh, man running. And the clouds. Oh, he. And, oh, that, that does remind me of something. Yes. Uh, uh, when we were uh, back in the days of Sutton Park. Yes, I, I remember um, that I, I was in the park. I, I was doing some exercise. Probably you doing exercise. Yes, Paul, things were different then. I was younger. I, I liked to exercise. Sutton Park is such a nice place. It, it is that. I, I mean, I did a lot of walking there. I don't know I would have wanted to run. I'm not really a running person. I like to... Well, I, I would rarely have the energy these days. Or, but, uh, yeah, I used to love going for long walks and, uh, you know, really taking in the environment. Yes, Paul, I, I understand. I, I used to like to run. And uh, well, I, I sometimes I would go with uh, some other friends of mine. And we, we would talk. And uh, we would just be chatting. <laughs> but I, I remember there was this time. You know, I know Sutton Park is not, in, it's not exactly in the centre of Birmingham, but on the outskirts. And I remember we were, I was out there and we were running and I was talking and I, I it was a very cloudy day and uh, uh, we could hear this noise, we could hear this noise. And uh, I thought, what, what on earth is, is, is it? Is, is it uh, Azrael returning with his, his min minions? Um, and and we, we were, well, what, what is it? What is it? What's coming out of the earth? Oh, goodness, it could be the end of everything. But, but it was a helicopter. It was the, the sound of the helicopter. It, it was very strange. I guess the, the, the trees and the different sort of landscape of Sutton Park, it, it, uh, I guess this, you know, it makes sound carry in a strange way. And, uh, oh, I, I remember being quite surprised. It was a helicopter. What was a helicopter doing in Sutton Park? That was almost uh, more surprising than Azrael rising out of the earth to, I don't know, go shopping or something. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's weird, these dice, aren't they? Yes, it's very specific, isn't it? I can't say I'd, I'd ever really thought about that uh, thing until you, you know, until I rolled the dice. I know, uh, I know. Have you done it, Paul? Have I done it? No, I've, I've, I've not. Not yet. Uh, well, I, I rolled one, but I haven't done the whole... Uh, maybe, maybe at the end. Yes, Paul, that would be good. August, what about you? Oh, all right, yes, I, I'll, I'll have a go. Let's mix these dice up for you. Uh, take how many? I'd say take four. Has Dealey done it? N no, because I think we need... Uh, Bettina was on the phone uh, just a uh, while. Well, uh, she wants to come over and see us all. And uh, I said, I, don't, I wasn't sure this would work if I rolled for her. So, and, and Dealey isn't really capable of rolling a dice. Sure, he could knock one with his nose. Maybe. Maybe, maybe later we'll see. Uh, okay, take as many as you like, but four at the moment is about the average. All right. Uh, I'll take that one. That one. That one. How was Bettina? Um, yeah. She, she's good. Yeah, she's good. Uh, there we go. Right, roll each dice separately. All right. I feel like we should have more space for these dice rolls. Oh, well, I'm sure it will be fine. All right. Um, uh, there's a man. And a, a house. Some of these some of these are the same as the one that you did before. Really? The helicopter. Oh yes. Oh, actually, in the fire, there's a fireman. He 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 popped up in a in Ick story, didn't he? Ick? Yes, Paul. Maybe you do need to get more space for the dice. Maybe. Uh, well, there's a house, a fireman, a helicopter, and a frowny face, unhappy face. Well, I don't know. It doesn't really. No, a house. You could live in a house. I don't think I've ever been on a helicopter. A fire? A fire in the house? Well, I, I guess that uh, could could be. Well, Steve, you're not going to be very happy if you get a fire in your house. Maybe fire in the house. The fireman came. Uh, 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 somebody got taken away in a helicopter? 
I suppose it's possible. Um, uh, well, I don't know, Paul. You know what I'm like with my memories. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, August. That's fine. I think I'm going to go and lie down. You, yeah, you, you go and lie down. That, that is a, a very good idea. I'm sorry, Paul. I'm sorry it was all a bit of a blur. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's, that, that is fine. Come on, August. That's fine. Make your cup of tea. Oh, that would be lovely. Thank you. Hmm. Odd, odd, odd. Well, Paul, I, I wouldn't uh, think too much about it. You know, uh, with with uh, all August's problems, it, it is hard to know. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it it does uh, sound possible. Well, of course it does, Paul. But these are only dice. You can't just say they're only dice. I mean, after what's happened already, you know, we've had actual memories. Well, Paul, I, I don't know. But, but, but look, you know, a house on fire, uh, uh, an angry face, a helicopter. It could have happened. It, it could be why August doesn't remember things. Well, maybe, Paul, but it doesn't explain anything. No, I suppose not. Come on, Paul, why don't you roll them? All right, I'll roll them properly. We'll just need to shuffle them up. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, Dales. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't play with the dice. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry, Mouse. <coughs> dear, oh dear, poor Mouse. He's yawning now. He's yawning, listeners. He's looking very cute. Right, I'll close my eyes and I'll pick four dice. Uh, ah, Dills has got me. Dills, you can't play with the dice. <laughs> no. Don't play with the dice. You do need to roll them. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 well, there's, um, a cat, surprisingly, a table, uh, a car, and a beef burger. This was just, <laughs> deals, this was just the other day. Oh my goodness, I remember. Listeners, this this dice roll is just from the other day. Um, uh, I, I, I was here in the house and um, uh, <laughs> Dills demanded uh, that we went and got a beef burger. I said, what, in, in, in the moment, in, in times of uh, in times of lockdown? And he reminded me that lockdown had, uh, had changed. We were now allowed to go to restaurants. Yes, you did, didn't you, Dills? Yes, and uh, so um, I had to go in a taxi, that's, that's what that car is, uh, I had to go in a taxi to the burger shop and uh, get him cheeseburgers and um, come back and then we ate it here on the table. <laughs> it's there right in front of us. Oh my goodness, Paul. Oh my goodness, it's true, it's true, it's all true. Oh my goodness, these dice, they do work, deals. I don't know. I can't believe it. Oh, here comes your Uncle John, let's get him. Your presence oh. has been detected oh, yes. and recorded. Thank Uncle John. You. Oh, 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 God, what's going on? What are these dice on the table? They're very special dice, Yeti Uncle John. They, you roll them and they... Uh, they conjure up a story from your past. And uh, we want you to have a go. Well, has everyone else done it? Yes, yes, everyone else has done it. Oh, uh, right then. Uh, can I roll as many as I like? You could roll all ten, your Uncle John, but I think it's probably overdoing it. Most of us have done about four. Oh, all right, all right. I'll do it, I'll do it. One. Let's put it there. Let's put it there. That one and that one. Where have you been this morning? I've been over at the Magpie Hut. Oh yes, how are the Magpies doing? Very well, yes, very well. I've got to roll these, have I? Yes, roll them. You have got much space for these dice rolls. Yes, I know. There you go. Okay, I think that's a... Uh, I've got a dog. I've got... 
a book. Yeah, it looks like a book, doesn't it? An ice cream and uh, and a sad face. Uh, well, I know exactly what this is. This was uh, uh, about a week ago. Oh, this, this is one, so was mine. I just did one that, that was about going to the burger shop for Dewey. Yeah, well, this, this was uh, to do with the magpies. Well, you know, I was out with the magpies. They, they were doing their routines, practicing. And uh, um, I was eating an ice cream because it was quite nice weather, you know. It's, uh, it's uh, spring weather, nice enough to have an ice cream outside. I was reading, the, uh, I was reading my book and uh, watching the magpies and they, they were too busy to, to notice and this dog ran by and uh, uh, he, he started to, to scare the magpies and I, I put my ice cream down just for a second uh, and I went to sort of chew the dog away and he ran back past me knocked over my table uh, knocked the ice cream over knocked my book over and then he just sort of scoffed the ice cream just rah, 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 rah. <laughs> oh gosh if I remember, we, we we heard all about that um, for days afterwards. Oh, well, you know, ice cream's uh, sacrosanct. Uh, man's ice cream is his, uh, his castle or something. <laughs> yes, well, no, I, I do understand. I remember being in Wales, Tenby, I think, or nearby, with Callum, oh, ages ago, 15 years ago, maybe more. And, um, yeah... And the seagull came swooping down at me and stole my ice cream. I, I well, he kind of knocked it out of my hand and then went and ate it on the beach. And so I went. Uh, I, I was, I was shocked. I was shocked. I was not surprised. I, I've told this story before. Anyway, Callum went and um, bought me a replacement ice cream, and I went and I ate it in a phone box, so the seagull couldn't get me. I don't blame you, Paul. I don't, I don't blame you. Uh, these, uh, these dice. Yes. Can they predict the future? Well, I don't know. Um, I would be surprised. Uh, do you want me to give Tallulah a ring and find out? Yeah, well, if you, if you, if you, if you would, just quick. We are coming towards the end of the episode, so uh, I'll give her a call. Oh, dear, oh dear. Um, at, uh, Oh, here she is. Hello, Tallulah Twinklehorn Music School. How can I help? Hi, Tallulah, it's me, Paul. Oh, how are you, darling? Oh, uh, we're good. We've been using the dice. Oh, has it come up with anything? Yeah, 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 a few things. Uh, well, you know, it has conjured up stories. Uh, and, uh, well, we even got August Evans to roll the dice. Oh, my goodness. Did, did you get anything? Well, he he couldn't. Uh, we could conjure up a story, but he we couldn't. He couldn't be sure whether it was uh, anything to do with him. It was something to do with a fire in a house and uh, an argument and, and a helicopter. Uh, we weren't sure whether the helicopter took away an injured person or uh, you know the person who caused the fire escaped in a helicopter or something. Oh my goodness, Paul! Well. Uh... I don't think August seems to have any burns on him. No. I hope it wasn't him who started the fire. Well, I, I, I don't know how much, um, you know, the trouble is we're doing it on this small table. There's not much space. Oh, well, uh, who knows? I know, I know. Um, if the Uncle John's here, he's just done a dice. It worked for him. Oh, well, that's nice. Um, we just wondered if there was any way you could, uh, you know, read the future. Oh, Paul, I don't know about that. Uh, I think there is a way. Really? Yes, yes. Um, it's, a, it's it's sort of a different version of what you do. Now, look, there's ten dice. How many dice have you been using? Uh, just four. Okay. Well, if your Uncle John wants to see his future, um, what he needs to do is he needs to pick six dice. Six dice? Yes, yeah, six dice. And then the remaining four dice, he must roll. Oh, I see. Oh, different. Yes, yes, Paul. If he rolls the dice that are left, and then, then that will read his future. Oh, all right. 
Uh, I'll let you get onto it. Uh, I, I hope everything's fine. Oh, so, yes. Sorry, Deedee's just leaped onto the table. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> okay. I'll speak to you again soon. Yes, speak to you again soon. Did you hear that? Yes, Uncle John? Yes, yes, I'm doing it already. Six, six dice and then roll the remaining four. Yeah, you got to do it with your eyes closed. Well, I imagine you do. Well, right, here we go. One dice, two dice, three dice, four dice, don't you mind, no, five dice, uh, six dice. Okay, well, those are out of the game. You have a little a little blue pouch uh, on a, uh, you know, we can put them in there. Oh, it's very nice. Yes. Um, so you've, you're left with four dice. Yes, yeah, all right. Uh, so roll those. There you go. Um, what have you got? Uh, what the fricking hell was that? I can't even work out what that one is. Yeah. Come back to that one, maybe. Yeah, I can't. Oh, blimey, I don't know. Well, there's a bicycle. Man on a bicycle, yes. There's an apple. An apple. Uh, there's a taxi. Or, or a car. Yes, we had that one before. And then what is this one? What is this one? It looks like... Let me see the difference. Uh, got... Uh, places, maybe? Because there's houses and factories and there's just trees, but... What is that? A guitar? It looks like... It does look like a, almost like a fish, but it's not the same. It's not a fish. Dear, oh dear. Uh, most, uh, most confusing. Man, I wonder. Could it be a a wine glass, a, a wine vat? Could be. That sounds like me. Uh, what was it saying? What if you've got an apple? Yes, Paul. You've got a, a wine vat. So put those together. Cider in a jar. Yeah, and there's. A bike and a car. Is that predicting a, a car accident? Oh, bloody hell, Paul. It's not very nice. But look, this is supposed to be your future. It's a warning. Maybe it's something that you could avoid. But I don't even have a bike. You don't have a bike now, but who knows? In the future, you might have a bike. We don't know how far in the future this is. Ooh, well, I'm going to get drunk, ride on a bike and get in a car crash. Oh, I don't like this, Paul. I don't like it either. Just don't drink any cider and don't ride on a bike. Oh, dear, oh, dear. This is a uh, a worrying end to the episode. Oh, dear. I, 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 I don't approve. You don't approve. You're the one who wanted to see your future. Oh, well, I, I don't like these dice. I don't like them at all. And then, no, all right. Well, there's no... Nothing to say that it's going to happen. Just, just beware, hey? Just beware. He says, just beware. So, it's your Uncle John, don't... <laughs> Sorry, listeners. Uh, it's your Uncle John is upset. Um, I guess I would be if I'd had a fortune, my fortune told when I got in a car crash. Blimey. I... I... I well, you know, as I said, if he avoids drinking cider and riding bicycles, he should be fine. I hope. Uh, yeah. Oh. Um, I mean, unless that isn't a, a wine vat, but what is it? What is it if it, if it isn't a... It's, I don't know. Listeners, um, I think we've run out of time. Um, I'd like to thank the regulars. I'd like to thank you for listening. I'd like to thank Bettina and Tallulah and Dealey for being here and uh, being his usual meowy self. Well, they've been very quiet now. Do you want to roll the dice, deals? You want to play with the dice, don't you? You want to hit them around the floor. Maybe that's how you could do it. We'll see. Yes, yes. We'll let you take some dice. Yeah? Yes, yeah, you're a good boy. You you do that. Aww. Well, we'll see. Um, so, yes, listeners, thank you very much. And uh, we'll we'll see you again soon. And uh, oh, be careful if you roll the dice. You never know quite what's going to 
come up on the uh, on the dice roll. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks again for listening. We'll be we'll be back again soon. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Lovely to have you back, Katrina. Um, uh, I want to roll those dice. I, I heard what went on. Yes, yes. Well, you don't want to read your future, I hope. Oh no, darling. I just want to do what everybody else did. <laughs> I'm a bit worried for getting Uncle John. Yeah. Well, we've we've uh, we've hidden all the cider, so uh, he should be fine. Okay, I'm sure it's all just a lovely bit of fun. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well. Um, if you'd like to pick four dice, Bettina. I certainly shall. Uh, there's one. Oh, one dice. Two dice. Three dice. Four dice. Then if we can roll them. Right. You still sort of haven't got a very big... You still sort of haven't got a big enough table. So we've got... I don't know... It's like a a city, maybe, with an airplane flying over the top. Uh, we've got a boy face and a girl face. Oh, darling. A drink and, uh, oh, love. Like a smiley, happy love face. Oh, darling. <laughs> I think that kind of speaks for itself. <laughs> the, the big city, boy meets girl, uh... The drink is involved and a smiley, happy love face. Yeah, I guess. Darling, I can't pin that down. That happened quite a lot over the years. <laughs> oh, I bet. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> it does remind me of where I met my first husband. <laughs> Bettina, uh, your first husband, you've never really spoken about him. No, well, well, no. <laughs> it didn't last long. Yes. His name was Max. Max. Max Dupre. That's where I get my Dupre name from. And I'm afraid my, uh, my maiden name is a bit more, well, <laughs> Flop Bottle. <laughs> That's my maiden name. <laughs> Goodness, Mix. Bettina, we're learning things today. Patina Flop Bottle. Flop Bottle. F L O P B O T T L E. That's my main name. Patina Flop Bottle. <laughs> you can see why I ran. I absolutely rushed to marry Max Dupre. <laughs> oh dear. Patina Flop Bottle. <laughs> oh golly. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, because it does look like. New York, is that where you met Max? It is, exactly, yes. How curious. Um, and uh, d d is Max uh, still alive? Well, it's funny you mentioned that, Paul. Um, I've been getting phone calls from him recently. I haven't called him back yet, though. Your ex-husband's been calling you? Yes, darling, yes. But obviously I've been trying to focus on well, everything that's been going on. And uh, all of the betrayals of long lost cousin Algernon. Yeah, well, let's not mention him. He's gone quiet at the moment. Well, yes. Uh, anyway, then there's Mustavius, of course, and August. And I've been trying to focus on August. Yes, yes. But what did Max want? Well, I, as I say, I don't know. He, he just sort of said that he, he'd heard that I was going through a bad time. And, uh, well, no. Maybe you should call him back. Well, maybe. But. Uh, you know, it's been a it's been a long time. It's been a long time. I haven't spoke to. I I just worry about what he, you know, my want. D did your marriage end badly? Well, oh, it's complicated. No, I don't hate him or anything. 
but uh, you know we uh, you know life moves on <laughs> life moves on but there we are in those four dice the city boy meets girl drink love <laughs> that's how simple it was back then oh well hmm. memories eh memories yes uh, i'm not sure if these dice are a good thing really eh? bringing up sad memories as well as sort of funny ones no never mind i want to go see august yeah he's down in the uh he's down in the lab <laughs> right good 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 <laughs> right <laughs> oh i can hear the music yes so can i and thanks for sharing those memories and thoughts with us uh bettina no 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 problem no problem <laughs> strange <laughs> And I will give Max a ring. Yeah, good idea. Good, good idea. I've got to go now! I don't care! Bye! I want to go with you! Got to go! Bye! Goodbye! 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 This show is part of the Pride 48 Network. Find more shows over at pride48.com. This is just the weirdest thing I've ever heard. What the hell just happened on the show? I have a voice. I have a voice. You have a voice. You have a voice. We have a voice. We have a voice. Unique voices in podcasting. Univospods.net. A bicycle, bicycle, or maybe, yeah. maybe if I do it again, maybe if I do it again, I'll get a different future. Yeah, maybe you explain uh, getting drunk on a bicycle and getting knocked down by a taxi. Maybe, maybe if I do it again, I'll get a better one. Maybe that one, maybe it overrules it. Yeah. I'll take, oh. Take one, two, take three, take four, take five, take six, and I roll the last four dice, and I've got, uh, I've, I've got, uh, oh, a bus, a chair, a man, and, and, and what is that? A mouse, a mouse, it's a mouse, I thought it was a squirrel. It's a mouse. Uh, oh, well, what if this links into the other one? This, uh, you know, what if the, the man is sitting on the chair, and he's in the bus, and a mouse runs out in front of the bus, and that's what causes the accident. And then meanwhile, he's... Uh, he's uh, there's a, a man on a bicycle who's drunk, and he, and then there's a taxi coming as well. All he just explains more about what happens. I mean, what if I wasn't? What if I'm the man on the bus, not the man on the bicycle? It still means that I could be in a in this road accident. Oh dear, oh dear! Dice, tell me more. Tell me more. <coughs> just, just, we'll do it again. What is it again? It's a good job. What's going on? I'm just uh, uh, trying to find out more about this accident. I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I've just rolled again and I found out there's a mouse who runs in, in front of a bus. Uh, I, now I don't know whether I'm the, there's a man on the bus, but I don't know if I'm, maybe that's me, not me on the, bu- on the bike. Because that would explain, you know, uh, if, if, if I'm not the man on the bike who's drunk too much cider, then, then I can't, that's something I can't prevent because I don't have a bike, I don't, you know, you know what I mean? I'm getting Uncle John, I wish, I'm going to take these dice away. No, 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 let me roll again. I'm just thinking, I'm finding out more about the, this future. Oh, Yeti Uncle John, uh, what, uh, I, I think, I, I just think you need to calm down. Oh, this, I've got a, a roller skate, I, I've got a, uh, I like, uh, uh, oh, that's a doctor. Uh, and, and, uh, 
harlequin mask and somebody swimming somebody swimming how can that how can somebody swimming be involved in a road accident oh well no no look uh uh somebody uh is on a roller skate well uh, that, that's a skateboard to get the control well somebody's on a skateboard and uh a harlequin mask i don't know if that is a harlequin mask but it's a well i guess it's a well yeah it's a kind of mask i suppose yeah, yeah. so uh so there's somebody on a bicycle who's drunk and, and there's a taxi and there's a bus and then there's a, a boy on a, a skateboard or a man on a skateboard and, and, and maybe he swerves and falls in the river and then there's a doctor and a harlequin mask i don't see how any of this relates to you we now don't know you don't have a skateboard do you oh, i don't have a skateboard no well you, you don't have a bike you don't you, you promise not to drink cider? Oh, I don't know about that. Well, not drink cider and ride a bike. No, I promise not to do that. And, and then there's uh, a taxi. You could be in a. You could be in the taxi or on the bus, I guess. But not if I don't. I don't ride buses much. No, that is true. You don't, because we've got the railway station right by us. Um, and uh, well, I don't know. It's your Uncle John. The doctor does. I think that's the end of your vision. Yeah, I think you're right, Paul. That seems to end it with the Doctor and the Harlequin mask. Uh, Yeti Uncle John, I don't know. Let's just forget this. Oh, I can't forget it, Paul. Oh, I can't forget it. I'm going to be haunted by it. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeti Uncle John, I don't know what it means. Just stay indoors, then nothing bad can happen. Oh, I think you're right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay in the lab. Oh, I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to be run over by a skateboard or, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know. Sorry, listeners. I, I'll, I'll take him away. These guys, it's been more trouble than, than I expected. Um, anyway, I should see you again soon. What does it all mean? What does, what, what does it all mean? I don't know. Lift off when the clock has started. I still care very deeply. Please, give me a call. Ciao. Thank you. 
lift off and the clock has started. Roger, 